Now, instead of just thinking of little boxes with little arrows pushing them, you need to realize that these forces apply in a numerous variety of everyday situations. So we need to look at some ordinary cases where there is a net force or there is not a net force. So just realize that we often have little example problems where there's just a little mass, looks like a little box or something, and some arrows acting on it. But these things are real world. Forces obviously act in the real world. And here's just some simple examples. If here's the floor and you're standing there on the floor. There are two forces acting on you. There's the, the weight down, we'll call it W, that's the force of gravity pulling you down. And it doesn't matter if you draw it up there or down here, as long as you have a downward force, that's the force of gravity. I'll put it up there, because down here I'm going to put the force of the floor holding you up. And I'll just write F, and then I'll write subscripted down here F floor just to indicate that's the force from the floor holding you up now if you're standing there on the floor the force of the floor holding you up is equal and opposite the force of gravity pulling you down so the net force on you is zero these are the two forces acting on you and they're equal and opposite in this case another example might be if you have um, a tree limb and you have a rope tied to it with a, a tire hanging down and you've got a, a tire down here so a tire swing and say you're sitting in there okay, and you're swinging on that tire there's two forces acting in this case there's the tension up that's the rope holding everything up holding up U and the tire, and then there's gravity acting down, and we'll call that W for weight. Tension, and I'll write weight over here. Okay, over here, the tension and the weight, again, there's two equal and opposite forces. The tension in the rope holding you up is equal to the force of gravity pulling down. In, the, in this case, the weight down, we're thinking of the pull down on the person and the tire together. Think of the person and the tire as one mass. And then the tension in the rope is equal, is, is an upward force strong enough to hold up both of those. And we'll talk about some cases, some ordinary everyday cases where the net force is not zero. If you imagine a bow, like an archery bow, and it's stretched tight, so here's the bow bending, let's see, bending like this. It's bending because someone's pulling the string back here. And notched in there is an arrow. Okay, once you release the bow, this string puts a very strong forward force on the arrow and there's not much backward force there's a little bit of friction right there where the bow rubs against the arrow and there's some air resistance as soon as the arrow starts to move there's some air resistance which tends to hold it back but while that string is pushing forward the string is much stronger than the other two forces of a, a very large net force forward in this case and that's obviously what makes the arrow go or a baseball player throwing a baseball if you've got this guy up here ready to throw that ball, he exerts a very large force with his hand to the right. And then as he throws it, that's obviously the force that makes the ball accelerate. And that's pretty obvious to you. It's obviously the force of the pitcher's hand which makes the ball move. All I'm doing is just showing you ordinary, everyday cases where the net force is or is not zero.